that's definitely it. Now I do confess that I did special order this Barnes & Noble copy because it's supposed to be signed by the author and I don't generally try and find books that are signed by the author very often. However, comma, Stephanie Meyer had single-handedly shaped my entire high school career. So I did kind of go out, spend the extra money for a signed copy and there it is. If you're unfamiliar, Midnight Sun is Twilight, but from Edward Cullen's perspective. If you're unfamiliar with Twilight, whew, you missed a lot on. Um, Twilight is a very famous book series. It focused on a human and a vampire falling in love, and it kickstarted a whole brand of YA. I absolutely loved it. I was a huge fan back in the day, and I'm so excited to have this book. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog. However, I have to head to work right now, and I don't know how I'm going to survive not reading this book this very moment. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am at work. <laughs> I literally was just able to open up the package, touch the book that was touched by Maya herself, and I had to drive off. And I'm like dying inside. So right now it's around lunchtime, and I decided, you know what? What the F? I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy the freaking audiobook because I can't wait until I get home to read this one. And then, and then the crazy good news happens. I had a free trial for Audible that I never used. Like, how have I not used that? How? I go through like 10, 12 audiobooks a month and I've never used the Audible credit. But, oh, thank goodness. So I just started listening to it on my lunch break and it is gorgeous so far. It's read by Jake Abel, and whew, that man has a voice like butter on toasted bread. It is gorgeous. Just the book itself. I, I remember the first time I read The Midnight Sun, like the early 2008 version that was like kind of thrown on the internet unpublished. And I remember just being blown away. I remember just loving it and like freaking out. I mean, I only finished with chapter one, but huh, man, this is like bringing up all the expectations. Everything is gorgeous about this book and I cannot stop thinking about it. All right, I'm going to sign off now. I have to get back to work. Okay, I know like I, I said I was going to say bye, but like I just got to the part where Edward totally saw Bella and he didn't, was he wasn't able to read her mind and he was like freaking out over it. I know. <laughs> Guys, I haven't gotten like this squealy or this excited about a book in forever. I think it's just the nostalgia like really, really hitting me. But oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. Guys, we just hit that first look scene. Oh. I just, I'm so giddy. I haven't been this giddy over a book in like for freaking ever. I just, I can't, I can't, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> right, so I just got to chapter four and snack break right now. So we just got up to the point where, let's see, so far we've covered um, where Edward first saw Bella. We covered where Bella nearly got hit by the truck. We got covered by the point where all the guys asked Bella out to the dance on the same day and she was going to Seattle. And we just got to the point where Edward decides to ask to drive or join her in Seattle. So it's like, I know what's going to be happening, but I don't always anticipate it so as soon as something happens i'm like oh yeah that, that, that's that thing so far honestly i'm loving it i love getting edward's perspective on everything it is so much fun i love the consistency of his inhumanness because i feel like a lot of times you get like a vampire character and they're like pretty much a normal character the entire time except for sometimes they're like ooh blood but this one, like, it's very consistent throughout the story that Edward really is a vampire. And he has these killer instincts. I also am loving the justification for most of what's happening here. Because um, I feel like it's very easy to go, like, oh, well, Edward's just kind of being weird. He's kind of being creepy. He's kind of being old, etc., etc. But, like, when you're inside his head, you don't get that creepy vibe. So we're going to keep going. Enjoy my snack, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Oof. Got the hair down. We're ready to go home. 
and keep reading actually. <laughs> so I have a, a few errands to run today yet. I'm currently working on building a fence for our yard for Squamish. So we have to go check Menards, see what they have available. Okay, so we're almost halfway through and still going great, like absolutely great. I think Jake Abel, oh, he is a cold drink of water on a hot day. He has this voice that's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> hey again. So um, the adventure to Menards didn't work out. Apparently all of the contractors are buying up all of the fence buying supplies. So I couldn't buy any of the supplies I needed for Squamish's fence. I mean, I guess there were some things in there, but there just wasn't what I needed. So I ended up going to Walmart instead because I did need to pick up a few more things. Specifically, um, I'm getting a snake, which I am super excited about. It's going to be a little black king snake and it's going to be a baby. And I needed to pick up a feeding container for it so that way I'm not feeding it inside its tank. Yeah. Oh no, come here. It's like one of these things. Um, because my vet was recommending that I try and feed my snake always in a separate container so that way they don't associate your hands with food. Ooh, the sun just came out and it is bright. So what I'm just going to say is that we're going to be doing my favorite part of the day right now and that is picking Squamish up from daycare. Good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Alright, next up we have the garden. Oh no. Am I outside? Am I not inside with you? Oh no. Okay, so I'm about three-fourths of the way through and I'm going to do some weeding in the garden while I'm working on reading up a little bit more. Check out, I got some rhubarb, got my pumpkin, I got a lot of potato in there, I've got some zucchini that won't stop growing, and tomatoes. Very happy about the garden so far. So as a quick note for the way this book is going, I we have gotten into more areas of the book where Bella was not with Edward so we can get his perspective only especially when he was leading James away from Bella when James was just trying to kill her. So it was really kind of fun for me to read all of that stuff and see what Edward was doing in the background. And it had a lot more action than the original Twilight, I'll tell you that much. So for that, I do love how this book is adding more scenes to it. Um, I do feel that, oh, by the way, I grew tomatoes. Very proud. <laughs> but, um... I do love how the book is adding in more and more things, and I am going to make dinner and keep listening. All right, so I finished the book, and I'm going to feed Agatha on screen while I talk about the ending. Overall, I think this book worked really well. If I had to rate it, I would say five stars, but that is factoring in my nostalgia and my just my happiness at having another book in this series. I think um, a regular book reader would might rate it closer to four stars because it was very entertaining um it was also 600 pages like over 600 pages and it's very hard for me to justify that long of a book for the most part i think it was pretty entertaining i think it fit really well with the twilight saga overall i liked getting edward's perspective it was fun to see how he interpreted the scenes always differently from bella and in his own perspective I don't feel like he broke character at all. I thought that was very consistent. However, he does tend to think on things too much. And it got a little bit samey by the third or fourth time he started freaking out about Bella dying. But at the same time, I was still entertained. So kind of take that as you will. Um, one thing I definitely recommend is do not reading Twilight. So, I mean, well, I guess I mean more so don't reread Twilight in anticipation of Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun has a lot of overlap with Twilight, and there's no doubt about that. It's like conversations word for word, and I think if I would have reread Twilight right before I read Midnight Sun, 
I probably would have felt a little bit disappointed. I would have felt a little bit like it just feels like the same book. However, because I've had about a couple of years gap since I last read Twilight, it was more so like vague memories of the scenes and then going, oh, that's what Edward thinks. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, in comparison to Life and Death, which is Twilight reimagined, but with all the gender swapped, this one leagues better. So if you are burned by that Twilight reimagined monstrosity, I definitely think Midnight Sun is still a good option and you should give it a shot. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.